Hello, all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. And I think it's about time for me to return to my roots, in a sense, as far as these 3D and Game Maker videos go. So a long time ago, back when I first started doing these videos again, I talked about basic lighting in a 3D scene. Specifically, that involved basic directional lights, point lights, and spotlights. And I talked about both per-vertex and per-fragment shading. And honestly, that'll get you about 80% of the way towards everything you need to know about 3D lights in, in a scene in a video game. The two big things that I would consider are specular reflections and normal mapping would get you another like 15% of the way towards everything you need to know about 3D lighting in a scene in a video game. Hey. And I wanted to make videos on that, but I got distracted by some other things and then 3D collisions happened and then I forgot all about it. But long story short, I've had shaders on the brain again recently as I've been known to do and I decided that it's finally time to finish what I started. And let's talk about specular reflections. So again, normal N.L diffuse lighting is most of what you'll really need to know to understand the basics of lighting in a scene in a video game. But you may wish to go a little bit farther down the path of realism when it comes to lighting in your games, and you may wish to add what is known as specular reflections. So, in a nutshell, if you have a light that is reflecting off of some surface, and if the reflection is uh, coming directly back at your eye, or the camera in our case, then you're going to see a little bit of shininess on that surface, and it'll depend on things like how shiny the material is, but for today's purpose we won't deal with specular texture maps as much as we'll deal with just calculating the reflections themselves. And this is honestly pretty simple. It is not too dissimilar from the original good old-fashioned n.l calculation that we got to get the diffuse lighting in the first place, but in this case instead of just taking the dot product of the light's direction against the, uh, the normal of whatever surface we're dealing with, and calling it a day. We're going to be taking the direction vector of the light that's coming in, we're going to be reflecting it over the normal of the surface, and we're going to be comparing that to the uh, direction of the camera's position to the, uh, the fragment's position in space. And if those two vectors are very similar, so if the camera is looking directly at a, um, basically the, if the camera is looking directly at the position where the light would be, would be reflected off the surface, uh, then we're going to see a little bit of a little bit of shiny highlight on said surface, and that's going to depend on uh, how the camera is positioned relative to the surface. So you can see that when I move around the balls, uh, the position of the specular um, the position of the specular highlight moves with us. Uh, it's it's always going to be somewhere on sort of like the front or on the top of the ball, but uh, it's it's going to um, move left or right or up and down depending on. Uh, where we are relative to the ball, and if the light is coming down in about this direction, if the sun is like up there somewhere, then we can imagine those rays of light uh, bouncing off of the um, bouncing off the ball, scattering, and in some cases, uh, when the position is just right, it's going to be scattering uh, in the general direction towards our camera position, resulting in that specular highlight. So, my test project is not quite so advanced, um, or my, uh, my actual tutorial project that I'm going to start with, I've, um, I've cleaned up the scene a little bit. I've gone back to smooth shading on these balls. Uh, we might remember that they were using faceted shading for the longest time. And the, uh, the demo scene that we're going to start with is going to be good old-fashioned N.L. No, uh, no specular reflections in sight. So I've gone and cleaned up the test project a little bit. I've gone and gotten rid of some code that I won't really be needing anymore. Um, I've also gone and cleaned up the basic 3D stuff shader a little bit. In a way that will make it a little bit, um in a way that should make it pretty straightforward to add what I need to get the specular reflection um, implemented. So before this whole section down here in the main function was kind of just like one blob of code, but I separated that out into um, when we calculate the final color, we're going to take the original color and multiply it by the sum of the ambient light color and the diffuse color instead of just doing like the whole n.l thing in one line like I had before. And the diffuse color is calculated in these two lines over here for the directional light. Uh, we've got some starting parameters at the top, so for example the, uh, the starting color that you sample from the texture, uh, the ambient light color, which is the color of unlit regions, the color of the directional light, which could be a uniform if you wanted it to be, and um, the normalized light direction. And then um, again we're just taking the starting color and adding it to the sum of the ambient and the diffuse lighting colors. And by the end of this video, we're going to also have the specular color added in here as another term into the lighting equation. And it's going to be calculated in a way that's somewhat like this. It's going to rely on a lot of the same, uh, the same inputs. 
uh, we're going to want the direction of the light. Uh, that's the uh, the light direction vector. We're going to want the um, the normal of whatever surface we're calculating the lighting for. And when it comes to specular reflection, we're going to also want a uniform vector through, which is going to represent um, the view position. So the position of the camera in space. Uh, this is all being done in world space. Obligatory shout out to if you're doing this in view space or if you're doing this in a deferred renderer, uh, you're going to have to uh, shift your coordinate system for the appropriate uh, lighting and um, view position values. Um, if you are doing this in view space, it tends to be a little bit easier because the position of the camera in view space is just the world origin, but I'm not doing that here. So let me go and add a uniform to Game Maker where I uh, set up the lighting shader uniforms of uh, view position. Uh, this can just be the camera's X from Y from Z from. It's nothing fancy. This is just the camera's position in space. That's the only uh, additional uniform we need for the shader to make specular reflections work. Next, I'm going to uh, make a little bit of space in here and I'm going to uh, define a few, um, a few parameters. And you can make these uniforms. I'll probably make them uniforms by the end of the video. One is going to be a float, which is the specular strength. Uh, you can think of this as the, as the, uh, the opacity or the transparency of the specular reflection. Uh, this will be a value between 0 and 1. Value of 1 is going to be 100%. A value of, for example, 0.5 is going to be about half strength specular reflections. Um, I'm also going to want floats specular shininess. And uh, I'm going to define that as 32. Uh, I'll get to exactly what this is in a minute, but this will probably be a number that's between about 1 and, say, 200 or so. I'll demonstrate what different values for that specular shininess do. Uh, later on. Next, I'm going to want to calculate the view direction. So this is going to be the uh, direction from the view position to the fragments position in world space. And I can get that by saying vec3 uh, view direction is going to be the u underscore view position. And I'm going to subtract the varying, which is the world space position, which we're already using for um, for lighting, not for uh, not for directional lights. Directional lights don't use this, but point and spotlights do. And we're going to want this to be a vector with a unit length of one. So you know what that means. We're going to have to normalize this. And I'm also going to want to take a vector three, which is going to be the vector of the uh, lighting direction reflected over the normal vector of the surface. I mentioned this a little while ago. Uh, there is a fancy equation that you can use to reflect a vector. It is this. I've talked about it in videos in the past for things such as bouncing balls off the ground or off a wall or some other surface. But you can use it in shaders too, the reflect function. Uh, it is built into the shader language, which means that you don't have to implement it. You just have to know what it does. Uh, I'm going to say vec3 reflect direction is going to equal uh, reflect the light direction over the v underscore world normal. So we have to make sure that our, uh, that our lighting vectors are pointing in the right direction, otherwise we'll get specular reflections in the wrong place. Um, the lighting direction is the, the direction that the light rays, the incoming light rays are traveling in my case. I have seen in other people's shaders for 3D lighting in games this going the other way, basically the negative of this. Um, I am negating that down here. So I'm taking the negative of the dot product of the normal and the light direction. I've seen people have this be negated to begin with and not have to take the negative. It doesn't matter. But just make sure that it is consistent with the rest of your code. Um, so the light direction is the vector of the incoming light ray. The uh, view direction is the direction of um, the vector from the fragment's position to the, uh, to the camera's position. Okay, so we've got those two vectors. I'm going to want to now calculate a float, uh, single floating point value, which is going to be the specular intensity. And this is going to be a bit of a long expression. Um, I'm going to do it in pieces. So first, let us say, uh, take the dot product of the view uh, direction against the reflected direction. So instead of like taking the the dot product of the, the light normal and the, the fragment normal, we're going to take the, the dot product of the reflected light and the view normal, and we're going to see how similar those two vectors are. 
And just like the uh, the original old fashioned end dot L, I'm gonna want this to uh, max out at zero, or um, bottom out at zero rather, because it doesn't make sense to have like a negative light or a negative specular intensity or anything like that. If you tried real hard, you could probably come up with a game that uses negative light, but I'm not doing it. Lastly, I'm gonna say vector three specular color is going to equal the uh, specular strength which is this value, which is currently just a one, uh, multiplied by the specular intensity, which is this value that I just calculated, and I'm going to multiply that by the light color, which uh, I believe I've defined as like, not pure white, but a, a light gray. And then once you've done that, this is our specular color term, which I'm going to be adding to the ambient and diffuse light color terms. And this will give us something that kind of looks like a specular reflection. Uh, it's not going to be very much, but it'll be something. And if I, uh, I guess I should, I should say it's going to actually be quite a lot because I didn't ramp it down. Uh, but we can see that we've got specular highlights on these balls here and also on the trees, if you look carefully and on the, the going merry over here, uh, if you stand in certain places, you can see that it moves with us. All right. So that is, uh, that is the bare minimum spe specular reflection that you might want to implement. Uh, there's a little bit more to it. You might notice that the, like, the blotch on the, um, on the side of the ball that's facing us is a little big. And that's because I left out one important part of the specular intensity over here. And that is, um, you probably are going to want to take this, this dot product term, and you're probably going to want to, um, raise it to some power. Uh, this uh, specular shininess value I've got over here is often sometimes called the specular exponent because this is the power that we're going to raise this um, this dot product to. And any number raised to the 30 second power is a pretty, uh, that's a pretty extreme exponent, but if I just run the game like this, uh, we're going to see that the blotch is going to be a lot smaller, and that is because we're taking a value between 0 and 1 and multiplying it by itself a bunch of times, which means that when we do that, the lower values are going to fall off very quickly, and the specular highlight is going to become much more concentrated around the exact point um, where perhaps my mouse cursor is. It's going to become much more concentrated around the point uh, where the ref reflection is actually happening, rather than being spread out around the entire area of the surface. Uh, if you like graphs, uh, I have whipped up a little, uh, a little Desmos graph of Basically, the uh, the dot product itself is just the uh, the cosine between two angles like this, right? Uh, this uh, this curve here is going to be raised to some power. Right now, uh, that some power, that specular exponent, is just one. Uh, but if I were to raise this to, for example, thirty two over here, uh, you see that that curve is going to be very very flat for most of the. Uh, for most of this range, if I were to increase it even further, it would be even it would, it would become even more sharp before ramping up quickly at the end, and this will give us the much more concentrated uh, circle of light on the um on the point of reflection rather than just the very broad uh, wide circle of uh, specular reflection that we have um, if this exponent is just one. I'll put a link to that uh, that Desmos graph down in the video description if you're. Uh, if you want to play with the values. Uh, also, if you want to play with the values, um, the uh, the only uniform that you really need to pass to the shader is going to be the camera position, but uh, if you want to, you can also parameterize the specular strength and the specular shininess. Uh, if you want to see those changes happen in real time, um, let me just define two more floats. And now, instead of... Um, Instead of hard coding those two values, I can uh, use the uniforms there. Something like this. And then we can, of course, uh, pass those as uniforms. Uh, that's the wrong uniform. Uh, pass those as uniforms to the shader. So we'll start out with a strength of one and an exponent of one. That's going to give us a very, uh, very blotchy very, very large, blotchy, um, specular highlight. In fact, if I stand behind it, it, like, encompasses the entire ball, which is just really, uh, really extreme. 
Um, if I were to increase the exponent a little, we can see that it's going to drop off. Um, towards the beginning, it'll drop off very quickly. Uh, towards the end, raising the exponent won't uh, won't affect it that much. And then, of course, I can also go up and down, and this will just make the uh, make the whole thing dimmer or um, or brighter. It's a little hard to see when I'm facing it head on like that. All right, that's a, that's a better look at opacity, I think, and it'll eventually go down to zero if I hit the, uh, the down key enough. All right, so that's specular reflections. Uh, this is, um, if you like uh, technical terms, this is known as Fong shading. Uh, you can take this a step farther. There are some adjustments that you might make to specular reflection calculations um, to uh, more correctly deal with flat surfaces known as blind Fong shading. Uh, I, I should also mention, by the way, that um, this is uh, this will work on flat surfaces. You can see when the specular exponent, especially, is low, um, we have uh, we can see that as I move around the trees or the front of the pirate ship will be uh, especially shiny. If I increase the specular exponent, it won't be quite as noticeable on flat surfaces, but it'll still be there. Uh, this does this does tend to be a lot more noticeable on smooth surfaces on surfaces with per fragment um, shading with um, normals defined per vertex and interpolated over the triangles. Uh, it's much less noticeable on things with flat shading. And um, if I, in fact, go into the, uh, the data files folder for this, and if I take the pirate ship and, um, and give this uh, flat shading, or smooth shading, rather. Uh, we should see at least, like, the front of the hull be a little bit shinier. That's gonna take forever to save, because this is like a Game Maker 7 program. Alright, so that's done. The pirate ship now has, a uh, has smooth shading on the hull. Uh, we can see that it is indeed quite rather smooth. Uh, some of the normals are a little messed up, but we can see that, indeed, we've got a little bit more of a specular reflection on that thing. Alright, that's good. Okay. I made this thing, like, probably seven or eight years ago at this point. This is uh, not what I would call a high-quality 3D model. Not as if I'm, like, any better at it now, though. Anyway. That's that. So I'm going to end this off here. Uh, I'll talk about blind fong shading another day. Um, I kind of want to do it now because it's not too much, but uh, you can probably hear that I don't sound great at the moment, and I don't really want to talk for any longer than I have to right now. So I'll have another video on that up uh, either in the middle of next week if I can work that quickly or uh, next Saturday. Until then, um, let's commit these changes. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this uh, project, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one Let's Make a Game, which is currently a 3D Zelda-like wizard game, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. And if you felt like pledging, I would definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Manta Ray, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, Vitro V, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.